So a lot of this is where I, I really wanted to get to here, which was this kind of you know hierarchy of wireless LAN needs. So. Uh, and, and I talk a little bit about each of these different applications. So, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, from just, you know, basic physiological needs up until self-actualization, whatever that might mean for you. Well, for, for wireless LAN, it's, you know, we see it as kind of being the same way. You know, I, I think we're still down at the level of our, you know, satisfying our physical needs with portable wireless LAN analysis. That's what everybody wants to do. That's the way we do it. But, but I think there's a hierarchy as we go further up, right? You know, above portable, there's remote analysis. And I'll explain what the differences are between that a second, then distributed, and then even using forensics like we used in that financial case, you know, and hopefully moving up more toward the pinnacle of, you know, kind of wireless LAN analysis as things get faster. So, you know, this is where we are at today, portable, you know, state of the art. So portable analysis, I got a network engineer, I got a problem, you know, Right now, I'm going to capture all that data wirelessly, right? So I'm going to capture where the network, the network engineer is going to have to go where the problem is. He captures, he analyzes. He's got to be within a few hundred feet of that problem. So you've got to be close, and you may have very limited resources. You know, at some point, you know, my, my laptop, if I want to do the storage, it's just not going to be there, et cetera. So, you know, what does that mean in terms of capture? Well, everything I show now is going to be based on this kind of demo setup. So what we have in a room just behind the wall over there. Um, so the packets, uh, the, the signal strength should still be pretty strong. Uh, we have a, a laptop that's uh, using a one stream device and we have a desktop uh, that's going through a wired connection through a media bridge that's three stream AC. So both AC clients go into an access point and then set up in the same area as a Cisco AP that's in sniffer mode um, going through a controller. And of course, I'm attached to the same, you know, subnet wired, you know, or at least, uh, at least the uh, network accessible uh, to where that controller is. And we also have an engine in that room. So what that uh, then ends up looking like in OmniPeak is if I'm doing portable, I'm going to be doing exactly that. So right now I'm just doing a portable capture. Don't do that to me. Best lead plans. Okay. There we go. Quite slow today. Um, so I'm doing a, um, a capture from within. Uh, you know, not right now, I'm just doing a, a portable capture. So I'm capturing off one of my AE 6000s here. Uh, it's only one stream. So even though I showed you that there's an environment in there where there's, uh, you know, could be up to three stream traffic, you know, when we go to uh, our, our compass view, and um, we say, you know, not let signal we were looking at before, let's go look at, uh, at data rates. Um, and let's look at our data rates just for AC, as we can do that with Compass. Uh, we can see that you know, we're basically at 433, exactly kind of where we'd expect in that kind of range. Um, so even though there's three stream traffic there, I'm doing a remote capture and I'm not seeing any of that traffic. And, and that's really kind of the, the, the pitfall right now, and I think you guys all you know, pretty, probably pretty much know this, you know, but with the, the USB adapters you know, in general, or, or just the technology in general, things have changed so much. You know, as network engineers, people need to be much more um, cautious and, and think much more about the environment they're going into and what they expect to capture. Because you know, right now, uh, I'm not going to capture any of that three stream traffic in, in a portable way. Um, you know, maybe it's because I don't have that wireless LAN type device. I don't have a three stream device. You know, whether or not they come, we just had that, that debate a little bit. But you know, as it stands right now, uh, no clear way for me to capture that, those packets at a packet level. So that's what uh, brings us to remote. So in remote, all we're really going to do is we're going to move the capture over to where the problem is happening. So rather than capturing here off my AE6000s, I'll capture from, uh, from the wire, and I'll capture from a device within the room. So um, back, to the, uh, back to the picture, instead of me capturing here with a wireless, I'm now going to, this device is actually going to capture the packets, the Cisco AP3700, and then I will see those packets on my laptop.
Can you do that with a standalone, not a controller-based AP? So we're, uh, it's a good question, and we're working on that right now, especially with Aruba, with their, you know, IAPs. Um, we can do it today with 11, up, with, up through 11N. Uh, that works fine. Uh, there are still some firmware changes. The same firmware changes they made in the controller uh, for AC, for us to work with the controller, need to be made in the IAP. And we're asking them to work on that right now. Um, and Cisco? Uh, We'd ask Cisco to work on it as well. I, I haven't, haven't gotten quite the same commitment back for the, that they'll work on it. Um, but it's another area where, you know, over the year, you know, this whole notion of, uh, of adapters, you know, I think we're going to move on from adapters. You know, I think even in, in the industry, what, what companies like us need to be looking at are, you know, commercial form factors, maybe APs, where we can just replace the firmware with something that's capture-oriented firmware, um, and uh, I think that's that's going to be the way we need to go to, to, to do this effectively. If you're interested in trying it with the IAP 225, there's actually a couple bloggers out there. There's Peter McKinsey over at MarQuest and at least one other guy who have done a video and pretty specific instructions on how to connect up the IAP and, and set it up to do that standalone AP capture. I just did it yesterday, and uh, it does work. It's very cool. Yeah, there was a, a blog and uh, from WLPC this past February. It was a 10-minute tech talk. I think it was given by Peter McKenzie. Right. Yeah, that's when they came from Peter McKenzie. I'm talking right. About. And now since then, there's one, another fellow out there who's blogged about it and to get it to work. There's even some notion it. that they say they've captured AC, but I, I think... I think there's another area of confusion sometimes in doing all this where people think they've captured AC because they have, you know, beacons and other things that have, you know, the very high throughput information in them, but, you know, they necessarily maybe haven't captured AC data. Um, so at least that's what I've seen in uh, the screenshots that I've seen. They say they've captured AC, but when the, they show screenshots, it's from beacons. So it's, okay, well, that w you didn't really capture AC, you captured A, um, and we know we can do that. So, um, so, but now capturing remotely, you know, we see everything that we, we uh, uh, you know, kind of weren't seeing before. So um, now if we go to, to AC, you know, when we see the data rates are bigger to begin with, um, if, we, uh, if we go to AC, about the limit, limits of laptops. And here's exactly what I'm talking about. So you, you notice what we had as average before got way lower and our average jumped up. So you know now we're seeing a lot more traffic in there um, that we weren't seeing with the AE6000. And we can see that also from a packet perspective. Um, if we get into some of the packets, we'll see there's, there's AC data. Um, and let me see if we can find some of the... Uh, with you doing the, uh, the remote, um, can you capture on both the radio interfaces and the uh, physical interfaces of these APs that you're using so you can see mm -hmm. kind of differentiate what's happening coming in and what's going out? You absolutely can, and we do that quite often. So now when, the thing being, though, when you, when you take... So let's go back to the, let's go back to the diagram. So when you take the AP and you and you put it in a sniffer mode, it, it truly then is only a sniffer, oh, sorry, right? I didn't so say it had to be in sniffer mode, right? Sorry. But we do often, you know, capture not only from you know what's coming across the adapter, but we'll also capture what's coming in, uh, you know, on on the uh, on the wire port just to see to make sure that you know OmniPeak itself is getting the the, the UDP stream flow from the access point, et cetera. So you can do a, a you know a comparison there, but. But to that point, if you had other access points out here in the network, you could just as easily, with an engine, make a connection to those and capture off the wired side of those access points and see what, you know, what traffic was being passed up, you know, from the, on the on the Ethernet side. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, doesn't that depend on the particular AP though? Doesn't the Maru AP not disassociate? And when it's sending us packets? Yeah, so... So, so some do, some don't. Right. Yeah, right. so with Maru, you can actually, you know, uh, collect packets uh, into OmniPeak while it's still associated with its client, so you don't have to disrupt the network. So you could actually move from AP to AP collecting those packets. Uh, while with the Cisco and Aruba APs, you do have to decide which APs are going to be your sniffer APs uh, or... or bring one out of the network in order to be a sniffer AP. Now the one thing that was you know, still true when um, in our remote analysis, you know, was that 
you know, we were sending all those packets back. Chris mentioned that earlier at TCP dump as well. So, you know, that, that, you know, as we get to faster and faster network speeds, that may not be an optimum approach here. You may not want to be sending, you know, half a gig or, you know, worth of wireless packets back across the network for analysis. And again, I think this is the direction we're going in, right? So as we move from remote, so we had portable remote, as we move to, to distributed, right, we're now actually also going to move the analysis over to where the problem is, you know, and, and, and we essentially get rid of that, that wired connection. The network engineer still needs to make a wired connection to, to the engine, but it's really just for display purposes. It's not to send all the packets back. The packets are analyzed, you know, at the engine, um, and, and that, that's where they stay. So, um, and, and that's also very easy to do uh, from within OmniPeak, and I'm, I'm not sure I actually have that running in OmniPeak. Um, so I think I'm going, to, I'm going to stop some of these other captures. I've been running them for a long time. Yeah, one of the really big advantages of that is if your bandwidth is high on that remote network, well, you don't have to send it all the way back to your laptop, you know, uh, in some other building. It just goes straight to the engine, which might be a gig or multi-gig network locally. And then again, all you have to just do is display the packets in the analysis in OmniPeak remotely. Which so takes also, very little bandwidth. Right. So we have the engine in that room, and it's 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 simple. We just connect to that engine, um, and I obviously had already done that once, but it's, a, it's simple to connect to it. Uh, it already has. Uh, it had a capture running. I had a capture running that I that I called distributed capture, uh, but you see right now it doesn't have any packets for Steve, and that's because right now that Cisco AP is sending all of its packets to my IP address. Okay, but it's it's a very simple change to make. We go into the the UI controller for. Uh, for Cisco, and we come back to our wireless. And, and this to me before, and that's not me, that's the controller. Let me just start again. All right, back in the controller and then to the radio. And this is always, you know, a little bit... It's easy to do once you know where it is. Not the easiest thing to find when you don't since it scrolls off the screen. But you just configure, and right now I had it sending to my machine. If I send it to that engine instead... And then we close that and go back into OmniPeak. We will now see packets flowing into there from that engine, from that from that access point. And the, I mean, the one thing that you, you know, you'll you'll see is it it looks slower, if you will, because you know we kind of have this now flashing thing. But that's just the display side. OmniPeak just asks for data to refresh the screen. That engine in the other room is just analyzing all that data as it comes in, uh, saving packets to disk, archiving that all the time. So it's actually a much, much faster analysis. And the nice thing is I can disconnect. Now I can take disconnect my laptop, walk away, go do whatever I want to do. That machine is still analyzing, collecting, doing everything it's going to do. I come back in, I just get back on the network, and I go look at the status of what's going on on that machine. So it's it's really in the end doing distributed as much, you know. And as networks get faster, wireless and everything else, that is really I think going to be the approach going forward uh, is, is to be able to do this. It can also be uh, accessed by multiple users at the same time, of course. So you know, any number of it, some reasonable number of users could uh, could connect to that same capture because as you, as you know, there's so many different ways to look at the data. Maybe one guy's looking at packets, one guy's looking at peer map. Uh, so. They might not even know each other's looking at the data, but it, it's all there for them. Yeah, because the Omni engine doesn't, isn't intimately tied to the UI, it's actually known uh, to, be much, uh, to have much higher performance than Omni Peak. And so this will give you, on the Omni engine, the ability to, to capture and analyze more traffic than you would be able to in Omni Peak. But in most cases, you're really just you're looking at the headers, right? You, you don't need the payload. Um, most of the time, yeah. 
Yeah, most of the time. Halo Parker's is not really that important. Right, right. We, we could decrypt sure. it as well, and, and I was doing that earlier. We had to catch the ePoll keys to do that. So, uh, and I'm not, since I just started this, I probably don't have the ePoll keys, but most of it, and, and most of the problems that I described earlier, right, that you might use OmniP for in these wire, wireless environments, it, it's really, you don't need the payload to do that in most cases. You know, that, that SQL Server error, maybe you wanted the payloads for that. But you know, you also could have gotten that from the wired side of the access point if you really came down to that, and you would have seen exactly the same thing from the application end. And I think that's also true with wireless going forward, right? You know, when people are using a protocol analyzer, they're trying to solve the wireless side of the problems, kind of like that next step up from Spectrum. If you're trying to solve application layer problems, you don't necessarily need to be doing it with the wireless analysis. You know, you're looking at the wired side of the network to do that. So, um, but a few other things while we were in here that I wanted to point out, and I think these were in here last year, but, you know, we've certainly, you know, we've added uh, things like the MCS and spatial streams, um, the adapter we're collecting from, because now with aggregation we, be, we could be collecting from uh, more and more adapters. So we've made it really easy to find when, when we're doing two and three stream data, and we can see, you know, here was one of those packets where it really was three stream. It's uh, obviously 1.3 gigabits per second. Um, you know, this was all kind of just captured live. You know, one of the things I just wanted to show you out at the very end of this was there's actually a new column in here called sequence number. Uh, I'm not sure if that would be of interest to you guys. This is something we did just recently, and, and I'm highlighting it just to kind of highlight the flexibility that, that we have here at Wild Packets. Um, you know, one of our uh, colleagues at Aruba that's, that's been in very close contact with us, he's a big OmniPeak user. Um, he's been at Levi Stadium a lot in the last few weeks. You know, he has been asking for uh, the ability to look at sequence number, and he was originally doing it with a feature in here called our decode column where you can highlight a piece of a decode and it'll kind of track that for you, but he wanted to be able to track sequence number all the time. Uh, for at, at Aruba, it's just something that they always do. So Chris uh, was able to write a, a plug-in for him, I don't know, within uh, I don't know, a few hours, minutes. maybe. It was, it was okay, minutes. 60 uh, minutes. So the engineer will say minutes, and then I'll, I'll say an hour, but an hour or two. But it's really that quick, and we're able to get him a plug-in, so he's you know, just able to increase the functionality of what he's doing that much more. So, um, and those kinds of things are usually downloadable from our, from our website. So, um, so that's remote. And with that ability to aggregate, as he was referring to, and actually show you which... Uh, AP the data is coming from if you were to save that to a file and then open it up again we will retain that that information about uh, which uh, which AP the uh, or w yeah which AP it came from so you, you don't you don't lose that so that was the notion of distributed now I don't need to be another problem you know, I can put as powerful a, a box as I want to running, uh, you know, this Omni engine, which is basically Omni Peak without the UI uh, running, and, and, I, and I'm not sending any traffic back on the wire now. But then that last step, and I just kind of showed you what that was about, the last step is, is forensics. And then in forensics, you know, not only we're we going to do the live capture, but we'll save those packets to disk. And you know, if we put enough disk in the machine, um, you know, it's very easy for us to, to, uh, to take advantage of that. So and now I also have a complete history of that wireless traffic. So you know, showing you what, what that kind of looks like, I'll, I'll just go to a different engine for the moment. Um, oops, that one I want. I'm just going to go to a different engine. It's not necessarily wireless, my apologies, but that has a lot of pack, a lot of files stored. And you can see here we're we're storing, you know, uh, all different uh, uh, size packets. And we can you know, we can take this from different approaches. We can come either come into our forensics tab uh, and and look at the view and make a choice, or we can go directly into the files if we know there was a period of time, like in the use case for that financial area, where you know we know there was a period of time. We just come in and and choose a set of those files and say we want to do a forensic search and. Um, you know, if we want to apply a filter to it, we can. Um, you know, we can tune in the time frame a little bit if we want to. Maybe we want to also look at just uh, HTTP uh, for that time frame, and we start. And you know, it can take a little, take a few minutes, uh, but it'll now go ahead and it'll bring all those packets into a separate buffer, and then we can do all the analysis we want to with all of our analysis options turned on while that's going on. And that's another advantage of doing distributed and doing an engine. You do not to be, you don't need to have the 
have OmniPeak itself doing real-time analysis. You can have it just store the packets, and then when you come back, you can do analysis in the most detailed way on a smaller subset of those packets, uh, really kind of you know, using your resources in a much, much more effective way. So uh, I was not careful about how much I picked. So. It was a lot of packets, yes. Yeah. So I wasn't being real careful. So uh, we can come back to this. <laughs> yeah, but the nice thing about this is uh, he could get this going. He could log off his, uh, his machine. He could go home, could get through get through barrier traffic. Starbucks, I could come yeah, back. Uh, or from home, log in. The forensics analysis is on the engine, so it will show up in another list of you know whatever forensics analysis you have done, and you could open that forensics and do your analysis there, or give it to somebody else. So just um, you know, while that while that does its churning, you know, I just wanted to make a few points about um, you know where we were at. So you know, part of part, one of the other things is, is we're watching the wireless networks get faster. Is you know we, we've already talked a lot about you know, the adapters and that kinds of thing, uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about the, the software speed because uh, that's another thing that we're finding in the industry, right? We're now we're just like with that number of packets we just tried to look at, right? We're asking these uh, these devices, both the software and the hardware, to do so much more in, in terms of speed. And the one thing about about OmniPeak as a piece of software is it does do both wired and wireless analysis and the reason the wired analysis is important uh, you know from this perspective on the wireless side is because it's designed already to do multi gigabit analysis of wired networks and we're already analyzing 10 gigabit per second you know wired wired networks um, we can write to disk at 25 gigabits per second from these wired networks so omnipeak is tuned for speed so when we send it wireless packets we're actually we're actually making it a lot easier on OmniPeak because it's really designed to do a whole lot more than that. So you know that just really helps. And can you go back in a, a slide first? I thought there was a problem with capturing packets off of the Wave One adapter from Cisco since it, the you couldn't put the chipset in promiscuous mode. Off the Wave One. Off the off the module. Oh, sorry, this little guy here. Yeah. Where it says bad. flexible okay. data my, capture for my, any my, situation. My bad. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. Yeah, my, absolutely, positively, my bad. Okay. Fair. Not not meant to imply that that we. That's a pretty picture. <laughs> it is a pretty picture. I like. You know, it. I, okay. But. So I, I think it really is my bad. I think when I when I went and looked for images on the web, that's the image I found, and that just happened to be in the bottom of the image. So okay, um, point well taken, and it will not be on the <laughs> image yes. anymore. Sorry. Um, we noticed things. Sure, it's a wave one. That's good. That's good. That's what you guys here. So, um, just on the speed. I, again, I know it's not necessarily wireless, but we were independently certified as well with speed, and we really were able to write packets to disk at up to 25 gigabits per second. Um, so we really are in a position to handle high speed, you know, wired networks as well. Yeah, I think we've talked through a lot of this about the way the remote adapters work, but you know, through the AP, through the controller to OmniPeak. Um, and Cisco and Maru right now, and we're actually working with Maru as well. Uh, we also do support remote PCAP. We haven't talked that much about this. Um, we talked about TCP dump as a collection method and remote adapters. Remote PCAP also opens up uh, people like Ruckus and Aerohive and Xeris and others to us. Uh, remote PCAP is something that's typically uh, inside of the, the library of files, right, the, the Linux files that are going to be put on an access point. Uh, not every manufacturer exposes uh, remote PCAP, so you know, that gets a little more difficult. We either, either we need to contact them or you need to contact them to see if they do. But we know Ruckus and Aerohive do. We've tested both. In both cases, there are 11 NAPs here because we have those. We don't have their AC APs, uh, but no reason to believe why uh, AC wouldn't work either. And that's the, kind of the nice part about remote PCAP is it is more of a standard, right? So the packets have to come to us in a standard format. It, it's not up to us to specify a format to them. Um, there's also a little bit of interaction, so we can interrogate the, the device and say, hey, what interfaces are available for us to capture from? It'll come back with a list like this, so we can use you know checkboxes to pick a list. So it's really a very convenient way and using remote PCAP as well. So we're trying to offer as many of these alternatives as we can, you know, understanding that, you know, people are going to have a, a variety of, of different uh, deployments for, for wireless.